I was finding my videos were getting very confusing. You, you really didn't get a sense of where I was going with everything. You saw bits and pieces, but not kind of the overall, uh, oh, the overall idea. So um, I created a, um, a a diagram of the CPU um, that I wanted to build, and you can see how we've how we've progressed. So um, this is the data bus. So this is a, a eight eight line data bus, and uh, we're executing that with these. Um, let me pull my board over here. Oops, sorry. Uh, so this is a, the this is the data bus, right? These are the eight the eight wires uh, plus power and ground. Uh, so that that's going to be running down uh, this this uh, diagram here, and then we have on our card we have boards that plug into that. So um, we have registers. Uh, so we've seen those before. We have an eight bit register that's read write. Uh, we have two of those. We have a register A and a register B, and then we have a piggyback board. Um, that's the uh, uh, so where's my uh, so here's a register card. Uh, so this is uh, uh, one of these. Uh, this is a piggyback board uh, that's going to be the ALU. So register um, A comes in this connector, register B comes in this connector. There's some uh, 74F382s uh, and then a buffer out. And so there's an 8 bit. Uh, eight bit line that comes out. So this is an eight by eight uh, ALU. Uh, we we'll put that back on the bus. It's uh, write only. These are read write. Uh, that's why there's a double arrow. This is write only. Um, we have the RAM. Uh, we have the RAM card, uh, which uh, has a, a buffer that that holds the address. So you can write uh, an eight bit address, and then the RAM chip is read write. Um, program counter um, is read write. Uh, usually, you're using it. Uh, the program counter will then uh, get loaded into a RAM address. Um, so that's usually the way it works. Um, so you can increment the program counter and then go to the next RAM address. Um, but it's bidirectional, so you can load a new uh, program count, and that's for a jump instruction. So you can load where you want the next instruction to be loaded from. So you uh, execute a jump. Uh, we have the um, we have the the switches, which is our input our input device, and uh, we uh, we can just use a uh, uh, um, indicator board. Look at look at things on the data bus, but we could just uh, as easily uh, create a uh, register here that's uh, output only register so we can we can just output devices um, output uh, information um, I've ordered some parts uh, to make the output a little nicer um, so that's coming up uh, waiting for for those to come in the mail um, it's uh, give you a hint it's something you've seen on the MSI uh, channel before but um, I'll wait for those and then we have uh, our uh, microcode um, board uh, so we can load an instruction and that instruction then supplies a uh, uh, address to the uh, prom so this is a programmable read-only device and uh, we get 8 bits from the instruction and then we get another 4 bits from our, um, our counter and so we can have uh, 16 micro uh, steps inside of an instruction. So we have a 12-bit address uh, into the PROM. The PROM outputs eight uh, data lines, which are then decoded into 16 and 16. So I think you've seen that. So I think we've seen everything. Um, so what we need to do is um, uh, continue, I think, with this diagram to make it a little easier. So uh, RAM address, uh, this is a, there'll be a write signal here. Uh, the RAM has a read and a write. Program counter also has a, um, a read and a write. This is a write. This is a read. Oh, wait a minute. This is a read. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is a read. And this is a write. Uh, a write. <laughs> uh, 
Um, uh, this is a write. Uh, there'll be some line for a write into the instruction. Uh, the registers have a, uh, a read and a write. Uh, the ALU has a read. Um, the ALU also has S0, S1, and S2, and carry in. Uh, so those need to come from some place. Um, the program counter has an increment to go to, go to next to next location. Uh, step has a clock. Um, so all of these read write signals come from here. We have a uh, uh, a from and a to. So the froms are reads, the twos are writes. Um, what am I missing? Microcode. So the microcode, um, the instructions, I'm going to bring off some of those lines. I'm going to bring off three of those lines and they're going to go to, uh, they're going to go to here. And I'm going to bring off one of those lines. It's going to go to here. So bit 0 will go to C in, and bits of 5, 6, 7 uh, will go to these guys. That's how that's going to work. Um, everything else is read-writes, right? And the increment. The increment is actually going to be... Um, it could be either one. It, it, whichever I have left over. I think I have it set up as a write. Uh, so it'll be a 2. So... Um, this this increment signal will actually look like like uh, writing something, but actually it's just going to be used to increment the program counter. Um, yeah. Anyway, I hope that helps uh, kind of get a better understanding of what I'm trying to accomplish. Um, and so uh, this is a CPU. This uh, the RAM. Technically, this is not part of the CPU. Um, the RAM addressing would be, um, but this would be, this would be external. Usually, there's a uh, an address bus and a data bus that come off of a microprocessor, and so this would be the address bus and this would be the data bus. We have an 8-bit uh, address bus and an 8-bit data bus, so we can uh, have 256 bytes of memory. Um, we could expand this farther. We could put in a secondary uh, RAM address and make this a 16-bit. So you'd have to do a double write uh, once into this register and once into a second register to give you a 16-bit uh, a value if we ever wanted to expand this design. Um, one of the things I still am questioning is how I'm going to accomplish uh, conditional uh, instructions, so like a conditional jump, jump on carry, jump on zero, things like that. Um, I really haven't thought about that, I really don't know how to do that. I think if this gets complicated somehow, um, so we may expand on this later, um, but this is good for now, uh, give us a good idea of what's going on. Um, like I said, I'm not going to design a clock board yet, I'm going to actually drive this externally just to see what's going on. I might actually um, uh, create a a, f a fake clock board, maybe using an Arduino uh, to drive this and try to get an uh, understanding of the timing and everything. Uh, then maybe we can uh, use a GAL device, uh, the 22V10, uh, to, to generate this. Maybe we can just use 555s like other people have done. Um, I kind of wanted to make it a little fancier. I'm also very interested in once we get this thing working, um, how fast will this thing actually operate? So. We might have one video where we uh, uh, just slowly ramp up the clock until it fails. Uh, we can kind of test what kind of speed we can get out of this thing. It might be interesting. All right.